back everybody. Hey, see what color it is behind me? Fall colors. The temperature is definitely changing around here and it has come on real, real quick. But for all you folks out there that know what to wear in this type of condition where you got the cold breeze coming down, homesteaders wear wool. Super smart choice. This happens to be alpaca wool. Love alpaca wool. So soft and keeps you cozy warm. Today we're gonna cover seed saving tips. I know a lot of you guys out there probably wanna save your seeds. If you're like me, you go to the store every single year, it's like torture to walk by all the seeds and not to grab a few packets, right? Well, as homesteaders or inspiring homesteaders, we need to be saving our seeds. It's fall and the time to save seeds is right now. So if you're one of those folks that want to save your seeds, but maybe you don't know where to start, this guide and few tips is probably the video for you. So as we get started here, Take a moment, please hit the like button. It really helps out the station. Let's get after it. So I'm on my way to the garden. I'm gonna stop by here real quick and let the chickens out. We like to free range our chickens every single night. Give them a couple hours before bedtime. Come out and get some grubs, some fresh greens. They love it. Hey girls. Hey, hey girls, are you ready to come out? They really do love and look forward to their free range moment. And when I say free range, they, they have free range and free reign to the entire property as far as they want to go, as long as they make it back to their coop by nightfall. Okay, friends. So the tips I'm going to give you later in this video are going to teach you how to store the seeds, how to extract the seeds, what to do with them, where to put them, how to put them in their place. So those seeds will store for you, not only till next year, but for up to 10 years. So let's start off by going and finding some seeds. Everything's dying off in the garden. We are gonna go find seeds to be found. So there you see behind me is some banana peppers. It's mid-October right now. Last night we had snowfall. We have had freezing temperatures almost every night for the last week. So for mid-October, we're really taking a hit right now. So I might add, one of the cool things about following Riverside Homestead Life is that we get hit with weather a little bit earlier than everybody else, because we're in a mountain region. So you guys get a little bit of a head start, an earlier precautionary measure, an earlier video from me, giving you guys a little bit of forewarning about what's coming. I hope that helps. So I'm gonna try to keep this portion short because obviously most of you folks know how to gather your produce out of your garden. You can see that that our this garden box has been hit hard. This is the effects of freezing temperatures over the last few nights. Just major wilting. Now's the time to grab your last fruits out of these boxes, your last vegetables out of these boxes because you don't have much time left. It's also the perfect time to grab all of your little units to start extracting the seeds. So you can see the wife today, she actually extracted all of the cucumber plant. She actually put all of that into our mulching area, a little bit of fall pre-winter garden prep, something that we'll get into in a later video. How was your guys' tomato season? I've heard all kinds of mixed stories this year about tomato season. We actually had a pretty good one. Our uh, cherry tomatoes here these inside ones see these ones inside the inside the plant that's got a little bit of a, a barrier from the the cold air at night these ones are still real good to eat so let's go ahead and grab some tomato seeds don't forget the corn i've got carrot seeds in the sky at face level they're right here don't forget your marigolds you got a lot of marigold seeds sitting right here. You don't need to buy those next year. Don't forget your spaghetti squash. Pumpkins, getting pretty close. All these right here, cilantro seeds. Grab them. Parsley seeds, get them. Asparagus, can't have enough asparagus. My hands are full. We could stay out here for probably a whole video segment just collecting seeds, but let's get inside and show you how to preserve these bad boys. Oh, pups. There's Shedzy, cowboy Sheds right there. Good boy, Sheds. Zara's looking for a ball. She wants me to throw a ball. 
So I don't know, I got a lot of friends out there. I've got the Garden Weekend Warrior friends. I've got the Prepper friends out there that are prepping. I got the Homestead friends. All y'all need some good tips on storing your seeds for up to 10 years. We're on the way to the house. It's a lonely walk. It's almost a quarter mile. Not really, but it's a walk. So I decided to talk to you. How's your guys' gardening been this year? Um, please, please leave a comment below. I'm interested to hear. I reply every single comment I get. So love to hear how your guys' progress is going. Let me know. Okay, so the first thing that you do when you come in from outside and you have a wood fire stove is you strip off that wool clothing because you are gonna sweat quick. Okay, so here we go. We could go into great detail on how to extract seeds from different things like cucumbers, tomatoes, melons. There's a specific way to extract seeds from different things, but that's an entirely different video. What we're gonna talk about is how to store the seeds once you get them. If you'd like to learn how to extract a seed in particular, leave a comment down below. I'll address it. There's a lot of myths out there on if you do it wrong, if you do it this way, if you do it that way, it's not gonna work. Chances are it's gonna work. And it's gonna work for about one to three years. Like you've got a really good chance that your seed's gonna germinate. And if done correctly, you could keep seeds for an entire decade. Okay, so here's the big tips. There's three major factors that you need to follow. The cardinal rule with seeds is you need to keep them cool, dark, and in a dry area. If you can do that, chances are your seeds will last for a very, very long time. I give you one to three years, almost guaranteed. After that, the germination factor, it does drop off. But if you follow those three steps and do everything correctly, you could possibly keep your seeds for over 10 years, which is crazy. If you're just getting started, beans and peas are by far the easiest to germinate. So if you want a little bit of success under your belt, store beans and peas, because you're gonna have some success. Hybrid seeds. Just stay away from hybrid seeds. If you're just getting started, or even a mid-grade seed collector, stay away from hybrid seeds. There's a lot of scientific stuff that goes into storing and germinating hybrid seeds. It's a whole different scenario, and, and I would just recommend staying away from it. Stick with the heirlooms. So let's talk about what type of seeds you need to be pulling out of that garden. You guys need to be going out and grabbing the biggest the best looking stuff out there, if that's what you're looking for. And it runs consistent with, if you had tomatoes that were ripening bigger and earlier than other tomatoes, if you want that next year, then you need to get the bigger, red, huge tomatoes that produced early, if you want that early producing next year. And that, that goes the same with late producers. If you want late producers, you need to go collect those late ones and label your little bags and your envelopes late. Another good thing to know is storing seeds sometimes can be a little bit stinky, such as the cucumbers, the tomatoes, the melons. Extracting those seeds takes a little bit of a process and you gotta ferment them a little bit and dry them out. And like I said, that's a whole other video. If you need some help on that, leave a comment below. I will definitely help you on that one. Another important fact is seeds aren't viable until they are fully ripe. That means you need to let them dry out and you need to let a fruit fully ripen before extracting seeds, such as beans and peas. You have to wait for those guys to brown and actually start to split. That tells you they're ready. Corn, leave the corn on the husks. You want to let those corn husks dry out completely while they're out there let them dry completely before you bring them in and start extracting the corn kernels. Seriously, you need to let them over ripen and shrivel up. That's when you know they're ready. Remember, a well dried seed is a viable seed. We'll get further into that in just a couple minutes. I've got a trick for that too. And lastly, proper storage. Let's get into that into detail. Okay, so remember I was saying cool, dark, and dry. You can buy these little seed paper envelopes, just like this. 
They come in a pack like, just like this, from Amazon, tons of them for super cheap. This is the dark factor and the dry factor. So when you take your seeds and put them in here and on these envelopes, you wanna list what it is, the date, when you harvest it. Was it a big tomato? Was it a small tomato? Was it early? Was it late? Put all of the descriptive information on this because you could be storing this for 10 years. So we dry these seeds in a very broad spectrum. This is just a small little smidget of what we do. We have banana peppers right here. We have mammoth jalapenos right here, drying on paper towels. And whether we put them in these little paper guys or we put them in Ziploc bags, all the same. Cool, dark, and dry. Some people put them in, they'll pick up like little toolboxes and they'll put all of their little Ziploc baggies in a toolbox. It'll stay dark. They might stick it down in their basement. They might stick it underneath the sink and back in the corner where it stays nice and cool. That's a great spot. Remember, if you have a basement and it's got a concrete floor or a tile floor, that floor is gonna maintain like a 55, upper 50s range of temperature. So you place any type of cardboard box or toolbox to store all of your seeds and bags, that's gonna be a nice cool spot. Let's get to the dry part. You know when you buy a brand new pair of shoes or a bottle of pills or something, what comes in it? Silica packets. These things will take all the moisture out of the air. Save these things, put them in with your seeds. Perfect thing to throw in the shoe box Perfect thing to throw in the little toolbox where you're keeping all your seeds. It will take the moisture out of the air. Super smart. Another great idea, another great way to do it is you throw them in mason jars. Right here we have parsley in the jar. Same story. You throw your seeds in this little packet, throw it in here, or throw it in the Ziploc, throw it in here as long as it gets to a dark place. These things are super ideal for storing seeds. If you have a vacuum sealer and you can pull all the air out, even better. If not, throw in a silica packet and you're golden. Mason jars are very popular with storing seeds. Just gotta get them pretty much in a cool and dark place and you're golden. Okay, so another little tidbit, if you use these little paper ones, you're gonna, you're gonna take care of the dark aspect of it, but they don't seal up super great, so when you got something like this, you wanna throw it in a jar or a Ziploc bag and then store it in that cool place. I'll tell you what, when you're in the middle of doing all this, it's a lot of fun. Check out this workspace. Okay, so that pretty much sums everything up. I wanted to give you guys, especially the newbies out there, just a quick little entry level seed storage 101. Recap, cool, dark, and dry. If you guys want me to go into extra detail in storing any of these particular seeds or extracting seeds, please leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like this video. And subscribe if you haven't subscribed because we've got tips weekly. Thanks for watching.